Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today I have a piece of alder. Uh, it's not going to be a natural edge or a live edge, it's just going to be a plain old bowl. It's roughly 11 inches in diameter currently and about four and a half inches deep. I did a poor job of uh, rounding it up on the bandsaw so it's pretty out of balance. I'm going to be turning it about 450 RPM and my first step is just to round it up and try and get it a little more in balance. Recently some very kind viewers sent me some wood and I sincerely appreciate that. That's totally unexpected, totally appreciated. Such kindness, I just can't tell you. Thank you very kindly. I'll mention their names when I uh, get the opportunity to turn their wood. I want to be in the right frame of mind when I do that and I'm not quite there yet so I just picked this piece as a, a, a starting point. So uh, I'm going to use my 5 8 inch bowl gouge. I'm going to get my mask and face shield on and we'll get to turn in some kind of a bowl out of this piece of alder. Stand by. Well, I've touched everywhere here, so it's round here. I'm going to start working on this side corner. Well, I guess I better start working on the bottom. I didn't I didn't realize this came in here quite so far and I don't have room for a tenon or a, a base for it to sit on or anything. So I better get to the bottom. I should be able to pick the speed up here in a minute, like about now. Let's see what we can do. Now that's better, about 900. Well, I'm going to sharpen up. It's, it's, this chisel is dull enough, it's like going after it with a dull cat's tail. I'll be right back. Let's try a sharp chisel and 1100 RPM. Okay, well we have room for a tenon now and a base. You know, I guess I'd I guess that was kind of silly. I need, I need to just get rid of this. I've got this on a woodworm screw. I don't know if I mentioned that. So I'm going to remove the tailstock. I'll bring it back after I get this cut off. But because it's not totally in balance yet, I'm going to uh, slow the speed down a little. Try this again. We'll go back to the side. I want a narrow bottom and a wide top. Turn the speed back up. About 1300 RPM. I 
Well, you know what? I haven't seen a bug hole. I don't know how that's possible. Maybe I won't get quite so many thumbs down on this one. A lot of folks just don't like bug holes. I don't get it. Now we'll create the tenon and some kind of base for this to sit on. Okay, now I'm going to use my diamond point tool just to create straight sides for this tenon. The idea, someone asked me about this, the idea behind this is the point is uh, less than 90 degrees, the combined angle. So I can come in here and make a straight cut in without digging into this. And these are not a common tool anymore, they used to be very common. Um, that person had a hard time finding one. I found one on uh, eBay. And if you were doing a dovetail, it would be just as easy with this as, as uh, well. Now I knew the top of this wasn't particularly flat or even, but what I didn't know is a huge chainsaw cut in there. I just came real close to it on my edge here. I, di I didn't even know that. Not paying attention, I guess. So what I'm going to do is take my square point uh, carbide tool and just come straight in from the side over here and flatten off this, flatten off the top of this. that got it all not quite sheesh well this isn't exactly what I had in mind but go with what you got I guess I'll take care of that from the side turning at 1600 rpm bottom look like. Could use a little cleaning up I guess. I'm going to start sanding in reverse at 150 grit and I'll work up through 400. And then I'll alternate. I'll sand in forward and I'll bring you back when it's time to try a little something different. See you in a bit. Viewer James Stewart from Scotland contacted me online and wanted to know what I like to try his polishing paste. So he sent me this can. Uh, unfortunately, James didn't include any instructions except that I can use it on bare wood. It doesn't require sanding sealer first or anything else. I could just use it on bare wood. But I don't know how to apply it. I'm not sure what James's motivation for this is, if, if he'd like to 
sell this or maybe he does sell it I don't know that either so I'm just gonna apply it as I recall you do with a, a well-known brand that everyone's heard of I tried that before as well anyway so I'm just gonna put some on a paper towel rub it in good circular motion and then I'll spin up the lathe and we'll rub it in better that way and then I'll turn the speed higher and polish it and then I'm gonna go ahead and finish up with uh, Howard Feed and Wax. I guess the idea here is to remove scratches. James, if you care to comment on this video and, and maybe let everybody know or let me know how to use it next time, it might be helpful. And thank you for sending this to me. I appreciate it. I hope I'm doing it the right way. There's not a lot of figure in this wood. Uh, just a little bit right here and, and down the side adjacent to this. Right there, that's, the, that's about the only figure in this wood. Pretty plain. Okay, I feel like that's rubbed in pretty well. So we'll rub it in a little better this way. And I'll do this for a couple of minutes. Uh, I'll either speed up or I'll, I'll just edit out some of this so that you don't have to watch over and over and over, going round and round and round real slow. So I'll do that and then I'll speed it up and polish it with a clean part of the paper towel. And then we'll go with the Howard Feed and Wax. See you back in a minute. Okay, I'm polishing at 1200 RPM and the goal I guess would probably be to uh, do this until there's no residue left on the paper towel and I think I'm about there. Well, it looks nice and feels nice. Good job James. Now let's see if the uh, Howard Feed and Wax will stick to it or improve upon it or, or what. It does feel real good. I have no idea what's in the product. Uh, I could hear and feel some kind of grit in there and I don't know what's holding the grit in. I, I just don't know what's in it. But so far, I mean, that's that looks real nice on the bottom there. So I'm gonna let this set up for about 20 minutes. Come back out and buff it up. And then it'll be time to turn it around and hollow it out. See you in a bit. Well, I must say, James Stewart from Scotland, good job. This is just, this is just glass smooth. Pretty amazing. Now this does have the Howard Feed and Wax on top of it. And I buffed it the same way I buffed the, uh, the compound that James sent me. And it's nice. It's, it's pretty. It feels good. Good job, James. Let's see if we can get this off the woodworm screw and turned around here, ready to hollow out. And like I always do, I like to bring up the tailstock with the chuck just barely tight and use the live center to press the tenon into the chuck. That way I know it's well centered well seated and then I'll tighten the chuck jaws and we're in good balance and we've got a secure hold on the tenon so I don't think I'm going to use tailstock support it's not that big of a piece anymore how big is it it's a lot smaller than I started with eight inches eight inches by roughly three inches so I'll get my 5 8 inch bowl gouge sharpened up again and we'll get to hollowing out this beautiful, thanks to James Stewart, Alder Bowl. 1500 RPM, 1500. I thought I might try something a little different. My my wife bought this for me this last Christmas and maybe I'll try a little decoration on this edge right here. But I probably should sand first, get the smoothest base for this that I can. So I'm gonna sand this edge. I'll do that off camera because it's just gonna take a couple of minutes and then I'll come back here and we'll decorate it and then finish hollowing this out. I'll be right back. Well, like I say, I've never used this before. I did watch a video, but that was months ago, and I've kind of forgotten everything I learned. 
I'm thinking it's probably around 500 RPM. There's 550, probably close enough. I think you're supposed to be on center. Maybe you're supposed to be below center. And I'm just going to poke this just right here in the middle and see what happens. Pretty, pretty delicate, but that's okay. And I don't intend to color it. A lot of folks do color them. I'm not going to color it. I personally prefer this stuff natural. And then I'm just going to take my homemade point tool and just outline this a little bit. I'm just going to use this brass brush. Yeah, I like it. Good job, sweetheart. Thanks. Now we'll go back to hollowing it out. I'll crank it up a little more, about 1800 RPM. Well, we better check the bottom thickness. Oh, well, and we better stop. We're at about just over an eighth of an inch on the bottom. About the same on the sides here. Yep, let me get rid of this center and I'll scrape it a little bit. And then it'll be time to sand. Okay, time for sanding. Well, that's what it's going to look like. I'm starting at 80 grit. I'll work up through 400. And then we'll try the James Stewart compound again on the inside. Did a real nice job on the outside. And I'll bring you back when it's time to uh, try that compound. Try James' compound. I'll be right back. Okay, let's see how James Stewart from Scotland does on the inside here. I'm not going to apply this to the, uh, to the texture. It just doesn't seem like a good idea to me. I will put finish on there, of course. but I don't want to remove any of that texture. You can hear that grit in there because this is, I sanded to 400 and it is silky smooth, as my wife likes to say. So you can hear the grit working and working and working. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work this in here like this for a couple of minutes. And then I'm gonna spin up the lathe at about 200 RPM and work it in that way and then I'm going to take a clean part of the paper towel and uh, spin the lathe up around a thousand or 1200 RPM and kind of buff it all out of there until the paper towel has no residue I don't know if that's the right directions, James. Don't forget to tell me. But for the outside of this bowl, I really like this stuff, and I think I'm gonna like it for the inside as well. 
The inside of a bowl is always just slightly more difficult than the outside, no matter what you're doing. Using a gouge, using finish, it's always a little harder. I, I don't know why exactly. So I'll see you back here when it's time to put some finish on. Don't go anywhere. Well, so far so good. This looks really nice in here and feels really nice. So now I'm just putting on the Howard Feed and Wax. Let that dry a bit, buff it up, and then it'll be time to turn this around and remove that tenon. Well, I can see I'm not going to be able to get this Howard Feed and Wax into the, uh, into the grooves that I cut on each side. It's not getting in there all the way. So I will take a little brush and work it in there. But I'm liking this stuff, James. I think you did something nice here. Something worthwhile. I think it has more grit than the uh, other brand that I used. The only brand that I'm aware of. It may be a finer grit or a coarser grit, I don't know, but uh, I can hear it more. Yeah, I can't get in there. So I'm gonna grab a little brush and force it in here. Uh, and then I'll, when, once it's dry and I'm buffing this up, I'll take a toothbrush and with this spinning, it'll it'll just clean out those those things. It'll clean them out. See you back here in a bit. Okay, I've mounted a little round block of wood in my chuck, and then a piece of non-slip cloth, and then the bowl over that. Bring up the tailstock. Still have my center hole there for reference. Make sure everything looks good little pressure again that's pretty thin I don't know if you can see this watch this as I tighten the pressure the bottom is flexing so not too much pressure that makes me a little nervous I got a little thinner there than I should have and we'll bring up the tool rest and I'll grab a half inch standard grind bowl gouge and I'll just start working away that tenon Now because I do have really good clearance here, uh, I'm going to leave this raised area just as kind of a focal point. But you can see where my jaws gripped the edge and I don't want to see that. So I'm going to work around, work that edge away a little bit, kind of round that over. You can hear how thin that is, wow. You know, I'm going to grab a, a little smaller gouge. We'll go with a 3 8 inch. See if I can get in there a little tighter. Okay, that got it. And I'm going to grab a 3 8 inch swept back ball gouge. And I'm going to slow the speed down here. About 300. Okay, that's small enough. I'm going to slow down to about 200. And now I'm just going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl and complete the cut. Right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch pressure towards the head stock. Whoops. And there we go. But, but it was a whoops. I hope it didn't do any damage, don't you? Looks good. Then I'll just take it over here to the workbench and sand it up.
Well, here it is. One alder bowl in the books. Got a little bit of figure in there. A little bit of ribbon action going on. A little figure on this side. And there's the bottom all finished up. And a real nice finish. James Stewart of Scotland. Thank you. Thank you for your polishing paste. I think it did a real nice job. I'm real happy with it. I'm also happy with this little decoration around here. That's an easy to use tool. Uh, I might see if I can use it in other projects. Although most projects that I turn, as you probably know, are not like this. I, I turn natural edges, live edges, that sort of thing that don't really lend themselves to decorating. Maybe on the bottom. Maybe I could put something around on the bottom down here. Anyway, there it is. Hope you like it. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. Your comments are always welcome, and I try to respond to all of them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off. Good night, sweetheart.